Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Josh Ellsworth with Stalls and Merry Christmas Eve Eve. I think that's uh, officially uh, what we call it today as we all approach the uh, upcoming holiday. I just wanted to uh, make sure we came with you, uh, came with some content uh, today. We typically have our normal published schedule of Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays out on our YouTube channel that we like to stick to, um, but we are producing a ton of content for our big virtual event from January 5th through, uh, through 7th. And so uh, the editing department got a little bit backed up and I said, no problem guys, I'll go live and we can do some uh, live projects uh, here together. And so uh, quickly got to the end of the day on me. So it's a little bit after five o'clock Eastern, uh, but wanted to make sure we brought you some content and just had a, a chance to connect with you before we head into uh, the break here, which which I'm personally excited for. Uh, I will have a class that's been pre-recorded that will broadcast out tomorrow, which I review seven of my favorite things from 2020 that we launched at Stalls and Stalls Transfer Express. Um, so make sure you watch for that uh, wherever you follow our content, whether it's our Heat Press for Profit Facebook group or our YouTube uh, channel. If you're watching live with me, make sure you shout out who you are and where you're watching from. I expect our numbers will be a little bit down today uh, because everybody is cramming, right? And trying to get things done uh, for Christmas. Uh, there's always lots of last minute folks. And so hopefully that last minute person isn't you uh, getting your gifts, but actually making projects and charging just a little bit more for them uh, for a rush fee uh, if it's local to you there. So certainly uh, lots of opportunities for those of us that have heat presses and vinyl cutters in our shops or even from home. If we need to turn that quick gift, it's an opportunity and who knows, you may gain a customer for life if you're able to uh, follow through and provide something that they can't get anywhere else on such late notice. Uh, so today, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, one of the projects that my family is working on for 2021, uh, actually an initiative of my wife that I am helping with here or there. And so uh, she is a brand ambassador for a uh, jewelry company, uh, kind of an independent ambassador where she promotes it. And I think of like Mary Kay or Avon and those sorts of things. But uh, the brand that she reps uh, is a jewelry business and she's looking, uh, she's been doing it for a little over a year. She's looking to grow out her product mix into um, other products other than just the jewelry and the skincare line. And so I said, hey, look over here. How about some t-shirts, right? You can sell t-shirts. And I just happen to know a little thing or two about uh, making those t-shirts. And so uh, the way she's doing it is she's doing uh, what's being referred to out there in the market as graphic tees. Um, and these are extremely popular in the uh, female fashion, in particular uh, boutique fashion. Maybe some of you participate in that. I know lots of the designs uh, that we see uh, shared out there in our Facebook group um, are these style of shirts. And so she created a couple designs uh, and she actually designed in Canva, which was interesting. So if you've never used Canva before, that's a pretty cool platform for just creating little um, whether it's an ad or a business card or uh, anything, uh, frankly, uh, it's a pretty cool design software. And she was able to export the file so I could bring it into something I know, uh, which is CADWorks Live, which helps to drive my uh, vinyl cutter. So first, let me share with you some of the looks. Uh, looks like our numbers are climbing here. We got about 20 some people watching live here. It's good to see you, uh, Gary from Newburgh, New York. Uh, good to see you, Vern from California. IA. Um, Craig, Merry Christmas to you and your family as well. Thanks for joining us. Um, got Nestor from Columbia. That's pretty cool. And so it's good to see everybody uh, here uh, this evening or this afternoon, depending on where you're at. So I did some samples uh, for her and she posted them in a Facebook group that, that she runs. Um, so she came up with all the designs and the styles, but I just wanted to show you a little bit. This is the Ultra Weed uh, Metallic Gold, um, just on a black uh, Bella Canvas uh, shirt. So something uh, pretty fashionable there. Um, she liked this placement a lot. I got to change my hangers. I got all my dry cleaning hanger, but she put that uh, happy design, just kind of unique placement. So it's super understated, uh, doesn't use a lot of material, but this is ultra weed and I believe our gray color uh, that we applied here uh, to, in order to get so close to the collar, I used a uh, heat press pillow. So it would kind of sink down in, I'd still get good pressure there. So I made that and she's going to list that one a little bit later. Um, similar concept here where we did the, uh, this is a comfort wash uh, by Hanes, 80% ring spun cotton, 20% polyester uh, fleece. And we just did that same sort of concept in a light pink color. And then another play on do what you love 
Um, and this one's a rose gold on a Bella canvas uh, burgundy tea. So uh, some pretty neat stuff. We're exploring some different designs. Uh, one of the things she's trying to do is uh, coincide some of these design launches with holiday and she'll style up the shirt. The graphic tee is one piece, but it really helps to drive uh, the jewelry uh, that she'll merchandise with it to complete the whole look. And uh, one thing I think is really critical as we're all selling more online in 2021 is completing the look and showing more uh, merchandised photos, uh, pairing your item and showing it with um, with footwear or with jewelry or with a hat or with something that's just like a lifestyle element, even if you don't sell it, uh, to just make a more cohesive presentation of the products that you're presenting. And so it connects more uh, with somebody that's that's going to be potentially purchasing it or scrolling through their newsfeed and, and it kind of stops them a little bit in their tracks. But um, so the design I'm doing today, uh, let me pull up my screen and I'll show you real quick. Uh, good to see you, uh, Hazel Ann from Scotland. Very cool. Paul, good to see you, Craig. Um, lots of folks on there. Um, this was kind of my design space where I brought in all the different designs she wanted to do and started working through them. And she did, let's zoom in on these two, decorate a couple sample garments with Pop the Bubbly and Cheers Darling uh, that she did and, and laid out and put for sale. And so she sold um, a fair amount of both of them. And the shirt that I have to produce, it was a quick turn because uh, we got to ship these out pretty quick is the Pop the Bubbly shirt. And I actually designed this with our metallic black ultra weed. So just to go through some basics, I mean, setting this up again, this was created outside of CADWorks, but I just brought it in and I did some basic things like welding. So when I go to the wireframe view here, you can see all these letters are connected. And that's a function that CADWorks does for you for vinyl cutting, where you can weld script text together so it flows all as one piece so you don't have those nasty cut lines uh, in your text. It really just doesn't give you the highest quality uh, result. But I bring these in here and I'm actually gonna zoom back out and delete everything I don't want real quick. So we can just focus on what I do want and feel free to ask questions if you guys have them. We're actually going to cut, weed and heat press this together so we can show you the process start to finish. Um, I did this uh, eight and a half wide by 4.69 high. Um, pretty strategic on the sizing um, based on how many I can fit across the roll. I know I'm working with a 14.68 uh, inch wide roll. We say 15 inch, but it's actually 14. Uh, 0.68, and then that'll allow me to, to group up uh, a couple designs um, across the material uh, for bulk producing. And so I'm going to send this to my vector cut software. So I'm going to click send a vector cut and click OK. And basically, it's going to download. You see how it dropped down here and downloaded from the internet to my local computer. I'll open that up. It'll launch vector cut over here on this side of my screen that you're not seeing. So let me drag it. So you can see it. Uh, basically, this is my, what I call my cut driver. So I'm going to cut on a vinyl cutter. Uh, for those of you that may not have seen my videos before, I own this GraphTech CE6000, which is a 24-inch professional grade vinyl cutter. I've owned it for about five years. There are already two generations of cutters past this, but this one has served me well, so I keep using it. Um, and it's a tank. It does a nice job. So that's what I'll be teaching you how to cut on today. Now, uh, you can see it shows you just the what I like to call the, the cutter goggles, how the vinyl cutter sees the art. It doesn't see any color. Whatever color you load into the vinyl cutter is the cutter that it's going to uh, cut out of this. Uh, one thing you do need to know when you're working with heat transfer vinyl is you always want to mirror the image. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'm not sure I've loaded a scrap piece of vinyl into my cutter. So let's go ahead and see how much material I am uh, working with before I send the job. So you're picking up here, that's a kind of the corner of my heat press. I think I got you a pretty close view for what I'm gonna be able to, to do here. We'll bring you up real close to the heat press and to the weeding process, but i um, gonna go ahead and just load my sheet into the cutter. So I had a scrap piece left over of the metallic black ultra weed. See, I had it rolled in a drawer, so it's a little bent. So storage is important. Shouldn't really mess up my design, but you really don't wanna crease the material too much. I'm gonna load it adhesive side up into the vinyl cutter. And um, I noticed a question in there on someone tell me how I can pre uh, print one design cost effectively. Well, uh, heat transfer vinyl is going to allow you to do one design uh, cost effectively. Now, something I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna tell the cutter I have a sheet in it. And so not only is it gonna measure the width for me, but it's also going to measure uh, the length. So I can get an exact reading of how much material is in the cutter. So let's see. 
So it feeds it front to back past the uh, sheet sensors and I have 14.2 by 12. Okay, 14.2 by 12. And I'm trying to repeat those numbers so I remember them. 14.2 by 12. And let's go ahead and type that. So my width being 14.2, my length 12, hopefully I got that right. Let me look at my sheet just to make sure I'm not gonna mess that up. You see how I typed that in? And so now when I zoom out, I can see that's my available sheet size. Let me just peek here to make sure. So I'm just measuring the width manually here because I wanna make sure I got the dimensions right. Yeah, so the width is 14.2. So now what I'll be able to do is I know, yes, I could cut one of these and I could use the scrap of material um, that's left behind uh, another day, but I'm pretty confident that, you know, we're going to go ahead and sell another shirt between now and uh, New Year's when it needs to deliver at least one more shirt. And so a lot of this material, if you, if you keep vinyl, you know, it may end up in the drawer and you never use it again. And so in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and make a couple copies and I'm just going to make the most of my material while it's loaded. I'm cutting it so I don't have to waste my time. Uh, cutting another one here in uh, in in a couple days. Sorry, I shouldn't have clicked that rotate button. I'm going to manually grab the handle here and rotate just that one design. You see, every um, square inch of material is important in heat transfer vinyl because um, the material costs about a penny a square inch. And so every square inch, like your lead in edge, your back edge here, um, that can potentially be waste. So grouping up your designs is going to be extremely uh, important. We call that nesting. Um, and if you can get good about material utilization and nesting, you can really drive a lot of the cost out of your manufacturing of uh, a single garment or even certainly a large collection of garments. Okay. And so, yeah, this is an HTV shirt that I'm making right now. Um, I've just laying out my artwork for the sheet of vinyl that I've loaded. I'm cutting on the Stahl's Ultraweed material, which is our heat transfer vinyl that feels soft and is a low temp. And we're using the color metallic black, which I think is a really cool color uh, in the lineup. So once it's all set up, I'm ready to send the job to the cutter. I'm plugged in with the USB. But before I do that, um, I got one shot at this because this is all the material I have right now until I order more. Um, I'm going to definitely do a test cut and, and test the uh, test the downforce here. So as I'm running my chair over the shirt that I actually want to print, I should probably get that out from under the chair here. Set that to the side. And I'm going to come back over here onto my vinyl cutter. Um, a test cut's just a good idea. Uh, anytime you load a new type of heat transfer vinyl in, Right now, it's saying I'm at a force of 13 uh, to cut this ultra weed material. That's about 130 grams equivalent on another um, vinyl cutter brand if your cutter reads in grams. I'm going to go ahead and reduce that. I'm pretty sure that that's too much downforce. And I'm going to re reduce it down to an 8 because I know I've cut ultra weed on here before at an 8. And then from that point, I'm just going to do a test cut, press the enter key. And I'll take my little um, Stalls Easy Weeder tool. It's like a little dental pick tool uh, on the edge with a nice rubber handle. And I'm going to just uh, try to peel away this square and leave the triangle on the material to make sure it's cutting properly. And it is. And so you would continue to increase the force or decrease the force depending on the result that you got until you get a good test cut. Um, in this particular case, uh, since I have a good test cut, I'm going to go ahead and just program my point of origin there where I want it to start cutting. And then I am now ready to send my job over to the cutter. So as it's cutting, I'm going to answer some questions, but let me just show you, just pull this up. I'm going to click send cut job. And the machine will start working behind me here as we're talking. You can see it's starting to feed the material through and cut. Um, this is all unattended. One cool thing about this GraphTech cutter and even the new one, the CE7000, from memory, it'll track straight for about 15 feet. So even if I were doing, you know, 25, 30 of these, I could lay them all out and I could cut it continuously. Um, there will be a point where it will make more sense, uh, especially in basic finishes like just normal black or white or red, to order a screen printed transfer to produce this. Uh, if you're cutting and weeding, 30 piece jobs of the same logo over and over and it's not a special finish like a flock or a glitter or something that you can't order a transfer in, 
um, you're probably waste spending too much time. And so uh, part of it is like outsourcing some to let people produce transfers for you. We have, of course, the division of stalls, Transfer Express, that will do that. Um, yeah, I love this. Good comment. This is great. I got to pull this one up. Two types of people, those who test cut and those who wish they test cut. That's an awesome line. I'm going to steal that one all the way from Scotland, if I remember correctly. All right. And yeah, and so we have one that's a second type. Yeah, you, if you wish you test cut, um, certainly it can add a lot of pain in the process. Sometimes you can kind of work it, um, but it just can add a ton of time in the weeding process if you don't have if you don't have accuracy it, with cutting at the right depth through the material. Um, okay, so we have yeah for single color HTV will be the fastest and cheapest for one print. Um, sub dollar depending on the roll or sheet cost. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I mean, that probably means less than a dollar. So something like this, again, my design size was, let's just call it nine by five. And that's overestimating for easy math. So that's going to be 45 square inches in the design, not counting any waste at about a penny a square inch, which is what the material cost to me landed with freight and everything. That's going to cost me about 45 cents in that design. Okay. You do need to add the waste. If I'm doing some quick math in my head, I'll add say 15% to it for waste. So let's even just say 15% is going to add another uh, nickel or dime to the cost. I'm at 55 cents. And then uh, how long does it take me to, to make a shirt? And that's where I get my labor and of course overhead for the electricity I'm using, um, as well as the rent you may be paying depending on where you're located um, or allocating that percentage of your home that's, that's used towards the business. Because you want you want to include overhead, you want to include labor. If you start to include those things, in my opinion, it's going to do two things for you. One, if it's included, it's going to give you the option uh, to be able to um, sustain uh, labor when you need to hire. You won't have to raise your prices when you have to hire somebody to help. You'll be able to replace yourself because you are already paying yourself for the job at hand, uh, which is going to be really critical. And then overhead is important because I'm not saying you should uh, desire to have a retail space. Uh, certainly not right now. It's definitely been tough, and I and my heart goes out to everybody that has a, a brick and mortar that's that's suffering through it right now. Um, but it'll help you be a little bit more responsible on if you move into a space and you get a lease payment, or let's just say you sign on with a marketing agency or something. All of that flows into overhead, and you really need to consider overhead as a percentage of your cost uh, because it. Um, those are indirect expenses that need accounted for. All right. Um, if you don't own a, a printer right now, the, the vinyl cutter that I'm using doesn't print. It just cuts the vinyl. Um, professional grade is under $2,000. Uh, the one I'm using right now costs me about seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars dollars $1,800. Uh, you can get um, what I like to call a desktop cutter because I don't think hobby and craft is a fair word to use for the cutters that you can pick up at uh, Michael's or an independent retailer. Um, I like to use a desktop cutter, just smaller. They're about 12 inches, most of them. Although I do know that there's 24 inch ones now in the, in the Silhouette brand specifically. But if you get the uh, a 12 inch desktop cutter, um, sometimes that does the job and you can get one of those for $500 or less. And, and frankly, a lot of people have them just for fun uh, to do crafting projects. But I've seen many decorators that use multiples of those for business. But there is no comparison between what you can do on a roll style cutter with continuous feeding uh, and accuracy of cutting uh, in a desktop cutter. You'll just be so much more efficient if you're serious with a roll style cutter. Um, I will say I like the desktop cutters better than a lot of the cheaper uh, roll style cutters that I see on the market. I see a lot of people buy, um, you know, two, three hundred dollar, 24 inch cutters. And, and honestly, they just don't get the job done um, all that well when you get into thicker materials and stretch materials and, and what I believe are all the materials you're going to want to work with in your business. All right. So let's see, I'm going to try to, I got like six cords plugged into my computer, um, but I'm going to try to like tilt this so you can see the weeding process. And I'll come back to some of the questions, guys, so keep them coming. Um, I like to bend the material a little bit just to see if I can find the, uh, the edge of it. And I'll start here where I know uh, in the corner. And then weeding is the process of removing the excess vinyl that you want. So every heat transfer vinyl, if you've never seen it before, um, has a film layer, which is laminated or has an adhesive extruded onto it. It's like part of the color, the adhesive, the heat transfer adhesive is part of that. And then it has a carrier layer, which is this clear layer. Um, 
that clear layer can vary greatly. Sometimes it's very sticky. Sometimes it's not sticky at all. Um, sometimes it's in between, right? And you guys all debate and ask for different things on that carrier. Um, and that carrier has a lot to do with how the material works. Uh, stickier backing materials typically will allow for finer detail cutting. But then you have the trade-off that if you cut super large designs that you want to peel real fast, if it's a sticky backing material, it's not going to allow you to peel that fast without tearing or ripping or, or slowing you down. And so, you know, there's not a one material fits all. Uh, but if I had to pick a go-to material that's a good balance, um, this ultra wheat is something we develop from the ground up. We manufacture materials here at Stalls where I work. And uh, it's made in the USA. And what I like about this product is two things. It's sticky enough to where you can do the detail. Um, you do need to have accuracy in cutting. You can't use a, a dull blade. You really have to somewhat know your stuff to, to cut it accurately. Um, but if you are doing larger designs, it's a hot peel material. So you can actually use like a heated weeding panel or weeding table and heat it from underneath. Or I know a lot of people that will just kind of lock their press down and warm the base of the press. And then they'll load that material onto the press and weed on the press. I, you know, I don't think that's the best long-term solution, but with the limited view you're having here, you can probably see it's just a lot easier to weed big pieces when the material's been warmed. I peeled that back just in that short amount of time. Um, so I really like the ultra weed material from that standpoint. So weeding is kind of mindless and, and boring. I know a lot of people do like it. Um, I'm not a fan uh, personally, so we de definitely try to make the materials as easy to weed as possible. All right, so I'm about done with the outside layer of this. Labor, I like to say that takes about two minutes on average to weed a design, depending on your skill set in weeding and depending on the complexity of the design. But I bet you if you rewound this back, I, I wouldn't exceed. Uh, overall six minutes to weed these three designs. Um, so two minutes to design is a pretty nice average and labor cost, depending on what you're paying, somewhere around 10, 20 cents a minute. So usually I find that the weeding labor and the heat application labor is somewhere pretty equal to the, um, to the material cost. All right, let's see. So now I'm taking the weeding tool and I'm picking out all the centers. And of course that's all relative, right? So I guess I wanna correct myself there. If you're cutting a small little logo um, that has a lot of detail, odds are the material's not gonna cost you very much. And if there's a lot of detail to pick through, the weeding may take a little bit, a little bit longer than the material cost. But for most designs that are fairly average in detail, um, the weeding should be about equal to the material cost for your labor to complete that. All right, tough for me to multitask with questions here, but let me see if I can pull some questions while I'm weeding to talk to you. Um, yeah, so Brother Scan and Cut, that is a nice cutter. I've used those before. Um, the CE6040 um, is basically a 20 or 15 inch version of the cutter. I believe it'll accept 20 inch wide material, but only cuts 15 inches wide. But yeah, that's a, Graftech's a great brand. Um, Paul's used uh, several cutters. He likes uh, GraphTech, um, ease of use and workhorse. Yeah, GraphTech's my favorite. Uh, Roland's also a nice cutter. I've sold all three of the brands that you mentioned there. They all have their advantages, but I've, after selling all of them, I chose the GraphTech. <laughs> so if that says anything. Um, and then a uh, little longer uh, question that I'll answer while I'm weeding here is, let's see, opinion on uh, sublimation. Okay, so I'm finishing up the weeding. Um, I'm only going to fully complete one design because that's all we're going to press here together. I just got one shirt to make right now. Uh, sublimation, I think, is a pretty awesome technology. Um, I really do. If you, are, if you are doing heat transfer vinyl today in your business and screen printed transfers, I like what sublimation delivers because it will allow you to do hard goods, especially, which I think is a you know, you have to really think about your product assortment, who you're selling to. So whether people are shopping online or wherever you're selling to them, doesn't matter if it's a business, a group, et cetera. There's only so many times a customer is going to buy a t-shirt. And so if you can invest in technology that's going to uh, increase your assortment and your 
potentially your average cart value of what somebody will place into a cart and buy at one time, that's, that's a win in my opinion. And one of the coolest things about sublimation is that it can do um, hard goods in addition to apparel. And so when I say hard goods, I mean like right now, could do Christmas ornaments. You could do, um, if you have a mug press or a wrap, you can do a mug. Uh, you can do, um, there's a million things I'm just blanking on them, uh, even metals. So I've seen like some picture frame sort of sublimated stuff for wall art. Um, there are coasters, uh, iPhone cases. Um, there are just so many things that people are making right now that can be sublimated. So I love it because those items are created with sublimation in mind. They have that polymer coating on it so they can receive the inks, part of the chemistry and the way it works. And so it's awesome. And those are extra sellable items that you can take a customer's logo or a concept, add a ton of color into it because now we are dealing with CMYK printing at least, like actual laying down ink and digital and color. And I can bring that to life very easily. Now, if you're asking in the context of sublimation for apparel, I think it can be very good, but I think people um, overhype it generally. Um, it's, it's only good for items with at least 65% polyester in my experience. It's only gonna put it this way. If you do a 50-50, the sublimation ink is, is only binding with the polyester in the garment. That's just the way the chemistry works. The sublimation ink, when heated, turns to a gas, the polyester fiber, fiber opens up and it basically dyes the polyester fiber. And so when you think about dyeing the polyester fiber, you also need to consider that the only way you're gonna see that ink that's dyeing it is if you're working with a lighter color shirt. And so as you get into like black t-shirts and navy t-shirts, it's just not feasible. So you need to have polyester fabric and you need to have a lighter color shirt for the best results. Yes, you can always twist the results. And yes, you can do a red shirt if you're only doing black ink because black is darker than red. And so I know a lot of people that will try to sell sublimation for darks um, and you can use it creatively. Like I could do this design, it's black, right? I can do that on a red shirt with sublimation if it's, it has that polyester content, no problem. And it's awesome. Um, also, a lot of people now will take darker shirts, they'll sublimate them and then they'll bleach them to have the sh color show through. So there's always use cases, but like as a, a broad technology, I love sublimation if you're in the polyester marketplace or, or sort of fashion tea marketplace where you can get away with high polyester. Um, but I like it better for hard goods, uh, frankly. So let's see. So that's a, that's a long winded answer. So that's what I was looking for. Let me pull you up a little bit closer. You're going to come on a flight with me, traveling up to a higher elevation here where we're going to get a close up look at our Hotronics Auto Clam heat press. Um, this is. My personal heat press, it's the one I bought when I bought my cutter five years ago and uh, still remains one of my favorite heat presses. So when people ask me, what heat press should I buy from stalls? There's so many choices and should I get this or that? Um, now people will go and fight over their fusion and they love it. And you guys know I use the fusion in a lot of my videos and I love the fusion too. But when it came down to, to my business and what I could fit in my space, I like the clam because it opens in its own footprint. I'm the only one pressing shirts here. So I love the ability to just lock this down and be able to multitask because it does automatically open. Now, something that's critical here, um, if you buy the clam is putting it on a stand. So I have mine on this uh, freestanding stand with wheels so I can wheel it around if I want to. Um, and what that counter stand or freestanding stand does, or you can get a counter stand is it makes it wide open underneath. So it, it makes it a cantilever design. And so I'm, you know, when I think of like a cantilever uh, design, what it allows me to do is to be able to get underneath it. So that means I can split my shirt open and I can thread it on. And I know if you're doing a basic t-shirt, you can just lay it on top and that's no problem. But if you want, again, to increase your assortment and be able to print more items, being able to split and thread and get your item flat is absolutely critical uh, to heat pressing uh, with accuracy. And so I'll split this item. This is a next level t-shirt, by the way. It's a 60-40 uh, blend with 60% of it being cotton. And um, you'll see the collar is up on here now. After I load it, I pull it all the way down, right? So, I, so it kind of is how like somebody would wear it. Um, so I know that's even. I'll feel on the sides if there's a seam structure and make sure those seams are relatively even to make sure my shirt is straight, right? And then after that, I'm just gonna retract it back slightly and evenly until that collar falls off the edge. 
with that 40% polyester in this garment, if I leave that collar, even the edge of the collar up on the edge of the press, it's going to scorch up and it's going to look glossier than the rest of the shirt. And so you can really tell a novice uh, decorator when you start to see like seams and different things scorched up. So I think it's the attention to detail and the training that you're taking with being able to have a perfect print uh, without that marking. And that's a testament to the investment in your equipment. Okay. And, and the tools for the job. So I'm going to load this. Uh, Preheat is critical, guys. This is the first shirt I'm going to press on this heat press all day. I've been busy doing my day job, not pressing shirts. Um, and I'm also kind of like feel for the pressure at this point. I say feel for it, um, but there's also a digital readout. You can't see it, but there's a little red number down the bottom right hand corner of my control board. And so that's another thing I love about this press. It has the time and temperature, of course, but it actually has a pressure readout. So I adjust this knob and when I lock it down, it gives me a pressure readout from one to nine. And right now it's on a six, which I know is a medium pressure. Um, this product applies at a medium pressure for our ultra weed. And so anywhere between a four five or six going to be just fine. Okay. And so now I'll take my design and I'm going to position into place. I've preheated to remove that moisture. Um, a little tip I've shown it before, but just in case you haven't seen uh, these videos, you kind of fold the print back to back, not on the sticky side and just give it a little pinch just something, a crease line uh, to be able to center it. Uh, some designs are extremely tough to uh, find the center. And so now I'll position it on. I got to think about my neckline here. I really didn't study the shirt. I just kind of went live. Um, but this is more of a scoop neck and not a crew neck. Um, what that means is it scoops lower, right? V-neck, scoop neck, scoops lower. And so my print distance should come up a little closer to the uh, neckline than I'm used to. Um, I know it's not extremely... Uh, it's not extremely scientific, but it's totally practical, practical is using your fingers for placement. And so you always have your fingers that all be relatively the same size. You don't have to reach for any tools. And so I typically use about uh, four fingers down uh, with the thickness of my fingers uh, to get a, a just a, a few inches down from the collar uh, for the placement of my design. And again, I'm going to bring this one up just slightly higher than that uh, because of the scoop neck style. So with that positioned in place, I usually hold my shirt up look at the tag, make sure it's even with that little crease mark, and then I'm just going to lock the press down. Ultra weed applies. If you have 50% or more cotton in your garment, I need to be at least 280 degrees. So I'm at 280 degrees, which is super low temp, and I'm for 12 seconds. The press will um, open, and then I'm going to grab the corner, and I'm going to uh, peel back. It's a hot peel. So I can peel it right away. It just slides right off and I have a uh, completed result. And so let's show you the completed result. Now this is gonna look a little glossier than Ultra Weed normally looks because it's a metallic shade of Ultra Weed. It's metallic black. Okay, so you get just a kind of seeing it there, right? You're getting a little bit of sheen on that. Um, and guys, this stuff feels soft and it feels soft for two reasons. Number one is because I'm working with a material that is super thin. It's about, from memory, about 90 microns thick, which is really thin. Okay, but also because of the way we've designed it, right? Thin lettering, lots of garment space showing through. Um, think about how it's going to feel, especially if you're decorating fashionable tees um, when you're when you're when you're designing and, and creating uh, products. So this this is a sold shirt. Uh, anybody want to guess what this was sold for? Um, so this was a listing again. If you missed the beginning that my wife did, it kind of has these rolled sleeves. It's pretty cute. Um, and it's a piece that's been sold and ready to be delivered for uh, New Year's Eve. I cut three designs today. We're going to produce hopefully a lot more of these as she sells more, but you can do as little as one profitably. So make sure you type in what you think it's sold for. I'm not going to give it to you until I had some guesses. All right. But I am going to look at some questions here. All right. So this is a good question. I love these types of questions. Um, is getting the laser alignment system worth the investment? Okay. So here's my opinion on the laser alignment system. If you are big into efficiency, um, the laser alignment system is totally worth the investment. So at the end of the day, if you're finding yourself not having enough time to get the amount of work you need to get done um, on the heat press or just in your day, uh, the laser alignment system is going to help. I tend to use the laser alignment system when I use it, when I'm working on our press where it's built in for general alignment. Um, what that means is I will literally project the line that's three inches down from the top edge of the press. And as long as I drop my collar in the same place, that will be three inches or two inches, depending on your placement, down from the collar. I also set up two lasers to do a crosshair for left chest. 
right? Where I know that that's going to be the same place every time. So I'll do these general alignments with the lasers that I think are super helpful just as guides for placing your graphic. Uh, what I would like to say is we sell the laser tool. It has four line lasers and it's a standalone system. And so you need to make sure you have a stable table rhyming here, stable table next to your heat press. So it's not going to move when you're working uh, the press. Um, I think there's a little more risk to using them when you're using like the swing away presses because the press kind of wants to shift depending on how hard you're moving it uh, side to side. It would certainly work great on a clamshell style press. Um, I do love it on our dual air fusion press where it's built in. So short answer is yes, I totally think it's worth the time um, to invest it if you're doing a lot of heat press work for my needs, which is very casual, not many shirts for what I'm doing here on the side. Um, I don't have it. I feel pretty confident in my ability to line stuff up straight. All right. So here we go. Uh, we got some guesses here. So yeah, and, and Paul uses the laser alignment when doing multiple. That is like for a job specific alignment, if you got um, 50 shirts that need a left chest graphic, the laser is going to be super helpful because you can kind of do a, a bounding box or even a crosshair to be able to hit that same spot every time. All right, so here we got some guesses. We got uh, Steve guess 24, um, Flex, good to see you, guess is uh, 20. Um, we have Ann 28 to 32. Uh, Paul says 15. Uh, we have another guess. It's 25. Champagne. Let's pop that bubbly, right? Uh, this is the uh, non-alcoholic version. Um, so the non-alcoholic version is a little less expensive than the champagne version, right? Uh, 17.99. I like the use of nines in the pricing. It's always a popular retail price technique. Okay, good guesses, guys. $24 is what these were sold for. Um, and so I think pricing is super critical, not only obviously for profit. And on this shirt, just for perspective, we'll probably clear, you know, $15 in profit, which makes it worth my time to do just one if that's all we sell. Um, but pricing is also like perception too. And so if you're trying to build a brand in 2021, and I know more people than ever are trying to build a brand in 2021, um, it's important that you think about everything uh, when it comes to your product. So in this case, it was important to stay on the top side of the price so we didn't cheapen uh, the brand and what was being offered. Um, certainly, if I were just selling this under Josh's tees and more, I could have sold this shirt all day for $15, probably sell a lot more and make money. But there's also um, the idea that now I can print one and make the same profit that I used to print two for. Um, so I'm not looking for just more work. We're just looking to complement uh, the, the jewelry line and build the brand, um, as you heard. Uh, the other thing that's perception is, um, Frankly, we're not letting people know that we are making them to order. For some reason, I believe the consumer um, just believes that when something is pre-printed, there's just a higher perceived value uh, placed on it. Uh, unbelievable, though, when they shop online at any of these sites, a lot of these big retailers are printing to order as well. But um, if, if we talk about like the shirts being pre-printed and we, we have this many or it's sold out, it, it drives this demand and this buyer behavior that I find to be much different than an unlimited supply and made to order. Um, I know a lot of you may be uh, using desktop cutters from home, but that doesn't mean we need to act as if we are hobbyists. I think there's um, you need to take it seriously and think about how people perceive your brand uh, from day one and don't cheapen your brand. So hopefully you guys um, have enjoyed this live. This was just a, a quick one uh, to be able to jump on here. I wanted to make sure we came to you with some content today and you got to see a real life shirt that was uh, sold for $24 and, and how we can make profit on that. Uh, certainly as we get into this, this was her first launch in the graphic T range. Um, I expect that these numbers will uh, compound in time as people see the quality and really like the product. And um, I think that, uh, I expect it to be quite successful. So I'll keep you guys updated along the way. Uh, but again, uh, it's Christmas Eve Eve. Uh, we'll be broadcasting a little more content to you tomorrow, uh, but we're going to go dark on Christmas. Hopefully you can uh, take some time away from your business as well uh, and just enjoy it with your family. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas, certainly a Happy New Year, and make sure you stay tuned for uh, more content like this in 2021 from Stalls. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.